The therapist observes the asymmetry of the patient in standing. The shoulder asymmetry is assessed by initially asking the patient to walk up and down on the spot. Once in the neutral position, then the height of the shoulders should be checked. And the shape of the spine is looked at to see if there's any lateral deviation, which would indicate an imbalance in the upper back. The muscle tone is looked at in the shoulder area. The variation in the sizes of a gap between the sides and the elbows, and also the length of the arms themselves, would indicate an imbalance. The therapist will now check the patient's range of movement by taking them through active, passive and resisted movements. Pain may well be referred into the shoulder from problems from the neck, so initially a neck assessment is performed. By this, we ask the patient to move their neck into rotation in both directions. Side flexion, bringing one ear to one shoulder. and the other ear to the other shoulder. Flexion by bringing the chin to the chest and extension by looking up towards the ceiling. This is all done very gently. Another movement which can often indicate a problem in the cervical spine is by asking the patient to move into retraction and protraction. That puts the stress on the spine itself and could refer pain into the shoulder. Having completed active movement, passive movement is performed by asking the patient to repeat their active movements and the therapist will passively take the neck to a further stage. Movements are again rotation side flexion flexion and extension. Passive movements into retraction and protraction are not required. To check the musculature out, then the patient is asked to move the neck into rotation, side flexion, flexion and extension. This is done isometrically so there is no movement. The shoulder girdle is then checked by asking the patient to actually move into elevation, depression, protraction, and retraction. This is done actively, passively, it is stretched, and then resistance again will check out the musculature. The shoulder joint itself is now put through the active, passive and resisted movements, initially starting with circumduction, looking for pain and discomfort. The arms are then taken into flexion, 
leading with the thumbs, looking to see if there's any comparison, and into extension, leading with the little finger. Lateral rotation. and medial rotation are also checked and compared. Passive movements are completed through the same ranges flexion, extension, lateral rotation and medial rotation. Again checking and stretching the structures. Resisted movements are checked isometrically going through the same ranges of resistance, flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, medial rotation and lateral rotation. Any pain on these movements would indicate muscle or tendon involvement. Palpation of the bony and soft tissue structures will show any areas of tenderness or pain in connection with the injured structures. Palpation of the joints starts with the bony structures. Starting with the sternum, coming up to the top of the sternum, you come into the sternoclavicular joint. If you then follow the line of the clavicle, taking it to the outside, to the acromion process, and just coming in from there, you can find the acromioclavicular joint. Feeling down the concave outer side of the clavicle, you drop to a bony protrusion called the coracoid process, from which three muscle tendons originate. Moving round to the back, Palpate down the spine of the scapula, coming to the vertebral border or medial border of the scapula, moving down its apex, the inferior angle of the scapula, and then moving up the medial border. The soft tissue structures can then be palpated, starting with infraspinatus, sitting below the spinal scapula, moving down to the medial border and the muscles of teres major and teres minor, and moving above the spine of scapula you can palpate supraspinatus. The rotator cuff muscles need to be palpated by movement of the shoulder, otherwise they are hidden underneath the big deltoid muscle. By taking the arm into medial rotation, you can palpate the tendon of the supraspinatus muscle. By taking the arm back but going into lateral rotation, you can then feel the tendon of subscapularis. Taking the arm forwards and rolling it in, you can palpate the infraspinatus muscle. At the front of the shoulder, by bending the arm, you can feel, on medial and lateral rotation, the groove between the greater tuberosity and the lesser tuberosity, in which sits the tendon of the long head of biceps.